So if you want to know what to look for when you look at your exhaust on pre-flight, that is a flame tube. And that's what you're looking to see. This is a brand new pristine one because it's a brand new muffler. They'll be a, a tannish or a grayish and they won't look like that for long. But then uh, you just want to see the flame tube. When you want to get concerned is when you start seeing them breaking apart. That's what could come and block the exit. More critical on cheetahs and tigers because they have a smaller exhaust. There you go. That's what one looks like. As another part of an extended pre-flight, you really need to check for those of you who don't have tigers and have an air intake up front, like on the Yankees all the way up through the cheetahs, make sure that while you landed at the $100 hamburger stop during nesting season, a bird hasn't built a new nest in there. And then as a part of your pre-flight, when you open the cowling, you might want to make sure that they haven't built a bird's nest in your uh, upper cowling area on top of the cylinders, which would greatly affect cooling flow. Now, as you can see on this aircraft, this is a very extreme case of bird nesting. It's even down in the lower cow. This airplane's set for 37 years, but a bird can build a nest and lay eggs in just a couple of days in your upper cowling, and especially in the fore place, they like coming down uh, <clears throat> into the front baffle and building down in the bottom where it's nice and safe and protected. And you can see evidence of bird droppings coming out or bird droppings on your propeller. So look for those as well. Again, a really extreme case. Well, here's a perfect example. Get a little less light. Here's a perfect example of a smoking rivet. So look under your airplane when you're doing your pre-flight. When you come down to sump the drains, take a look and see if you see any of your inspection plate covers that are having this problem with a rivet. It's worked loose, and now it's chattering back and forth in flight, creating this aluminum oxide, which appears to be dark gray smoke just streaking in the wind. And this is the one that holds your retaining ring in. So we're going to be drilling out that rivet and replacing it with a, uh, a new rivet. Be nice and secure, fast again, no more smoking. So again, smoking rivets, it's not going to get any better. It is only going to get worse. <clears throat> well, here's another little tail of a smoking rivet. And of course, you can see on this bottom of this cowling, there are several smoking rivets. A couple of them over here. But this one smoked so much, it ate itself up and actually went all the way through the lower cowling. So we're going to have to look and see if we can put an oversized rivet in there. But we're we'll we'll be drilling out all these rivets and um, changing out the exit pans. But still, that's what happens if you let a rivet smoke. Eventually, it'll stop smoking because it's gone. Here's a perfect example, example of an ash plume. <clears throat> this is only a small one. Again, once your exhaust feed clamp starts leaking, it's going to plume up on the pipe and it will not get any better so if you see this light whitish gray that's the ash from the exhaust con um, combustion byproducts and they're leaking out <clears throat> and if they're leaking out so is carbon monoxide so take a look for this on pre-flight get a good bright light and take a look and yes you can just put your finger on it and wipe it off and pretend it didn't happen but hopefully you're a safe pilot and you're not doing that Another item to check on your extended pre-flight, not on the uh, printed one in your flight manual, is check to make sure that your spark plug leads are tight. Um, sometimes they do work loose, and if you have an ignition lead come off, you're not going to be getting full power out of one cylinder, which will cause a vibration in the engine in the airframe. Uh, it, it won't be severe, but it's not a good thing. So be sure you check your spark plug leads are good and tight, all eight of them, or for those of you with the six cylinders. Uh, all 12. Another part of an extended pre-flight is to check the play in your flap system by picking it up and seeing how much moves. You should not get more than an inch of movement pushing up and pushing down with considerable force. Um, if you do get it, then there's a problem inside in one of the bushings, um, not the bearings that support the flap in flight, but in the control mechanism torque arm that goes across the back of the fuselage. It is not fun to go back there and repair that, but again, it will not get any better and it can cause quite a severe mismatch in your flaps. So be sure to check this on your pre-flight. You also want to check on pre-flight your bearing wear. And in this case, you just simply grab the aileron around the wingtip, push up, down. And if you hear that little bumping sound, there should be no play. 
Uh, people call all the time and say, what's the acceptable play limit? Well, it's 30,000, but you shouldn't have any play like this in your aileron. Also do the same thing on the end of your, on the uh, edges of your uh, elevator back in the back and make sure those bearings are not wearing. Then while we're here, we can check the other end. Yep, that bearing shot. And finally, let's just see if it's going to be a whole set on this side of the aircraft. Let's check the flap bearing. Oh, yeah, that bearing is completely gone. More than likely, the bracket's been worn. So we'll take a look at that, too. And while we're here, we might as well do the tail. We just grab it, check it, and there is no play in the tail. So this bearing is nice and tight. Add those to your extended pre-flight and have a safe flight. Well, here we go with an ash plume, and this is on the side of the cowling, and this is where a bead clamp has completely failed. Now, it wasn't the bead clamp's fault because the baffles weren't cooling the cylinder, and it just cooked the bead clamps and ate up everything inside of it. But that green stripe you see through there, the inside of this cowling is painted with zinc chromate to protect the aluminum. That white patch you see is all ash plume. And I took some acetone on a rag, and I just ran it across the ash plume to make the stripe so you can see it. So that's what you that's what you'll see in smaller detail when you're looking on your extended pre-flights. That is an ash plume, that's the color, that's what you're looking for. It'll come off on your finger and that's another thing to look for. Another thing you look for on your extended pre-flight is oil drips and here's one on the bottom of the sump. There's one over here on the drain. There's another one over on this part of the engine. So we've got something going on up above that's leaking oil and considering there's only a finite amount of oil in an engine, you really want to track these leaks down. So when you're doing your pre-flight, if you see a drop of oil, make note of it, bring it to the attention of your mechanic so he can trace it down and stop it. That's another thing to look for for safe flying. The other thing you can do on your extended pre-flight is get a mirror like I'm using right here and look up under your nose tire on the bottom of the fork and make sure that cotter pin is in place. You can also reach up in there and feel if it's there, but that cotter pin prevents that nut from coming loose and trust me, we've had airplanes that have not had it. The nut has come off and they take off one time and their whole front assembly fork, tire and fairing fall off the airplane, which makes for a very interesting landing when you come back down. So check that on your pre-flight Add that to your extended list. Another thing to check on your extended pre-flight is this B-nut on the bottom of your caliper. And what you're going to want to do is make sure that there's no oil on it, there's not a spot on the floor. The left brake is really critical on Grumman's and that's how we control our aircraft until we have enough rudder authority at about 25 miles an hour. So you want to make sure you're not leaking any fluid out. Uh, so again, just check that B-nut on your extended pre-flight. And this should be about the end of our extended pre-flight series. So I'd like to thank you for watching Grumman Pilots' YouTube channel. Directly supports the Grumman Pilots Association. Your GPA. Have a fun day flying your Grumman.